Welcome back, MDG Joe here. Today we're going to be going through some meta stats and uh, we got the new set, March of the Machine. It came out about a week and a half ago. Uh, folks are still trying out a bunch of new cards. We're getting towards the end of the season and I thought what we'd do is kind of do an analysis on which cards from the new set are performing best in standard uh, and which of those maybe you want to avoid right now. There's usually always the question, what should I spend my wild cards on? What decks are the best we do cover on um, terms of like the decks themselves but really we want to see what standout cards are from the new set and we get a bunch of stats on individual cards from untapped gg it's a companion tool that runs alongside arena client tracks your win rates but aggregates user data and provides a lot of like useful analytics that we're going to look at today if you want to get started with untapped the link is in the video description um, we're going to cover a couple decks as well here i will paste like a sample of each deck list in the video description uh, so you can also then if you just want to import it and try it out, we can go for there. Um, I will say, and again, preface, it is still very early in the season, especially in best of three. Uh, folks are still gravitating towards your go-to decks, the Esper Legends, your Grixis, stuff like that. So some of the decks just haven't hit the uh, threshold of games played to have quantifiable stats, but we have individual card stats that we can kind of see from there. Um, so I'm going to jump into it. We are going to be looking solely at Mythic Rank from the release of March of the Machines. So 10 days worth of data, 11,000 matches of standard best of three. Let's so keep in mind this is best of three. So you can have upward 22 to 33,000 individual games of Magic that were played. I have a filter on to look at minimum 500 games. And our focus today is gonna to be on main board cards. We're not necessarily gonna look at sideboard cards. We know like Lithomantic Barrage, the red deal five is gonna be played a lot. Glistening Deluge, the new like, a uh, sweeper kind of effect is going to be played a lot. Those are like situational hate cards in the sideboard. Those will be in the sideboard anyways. We anticipate them seeing some number of play, similar like Surge of Righteousness, stuff like that. Um, but we're going to look at main board cards. Um, because there's like two days left in the month of April, I just want to remind folks, uh, similar to the season ending in MTG Arena, uh, my charity drive is also ending at the end of April. So for those of you who aren't familiar, every penny I make off YouTube for the month of April uh, from viewer viewer driven ads, uh, I'm donating all the money to local Toronto based food banks. Um, so all the money I make, I am giving it to help feed those that are hungry. Uh, if you want to help out, it costs you absolutely nothing. Just watch my videos, like my videos, uh, subscribe to the channel, it helps with uh, suggesting it to more folks, the more views we get. Uh, the more Google revenue, and then the more I can donate to charity. So greatly appreciate it if you can. Uh, thanks to all those who, who have subbed in the last little bit. We're still pushing for 10,000 subs on the channel by June. We're at about 8,300, so about 83% of the way there. So again, it's free, easy, helps out. And, uh, and indirectly, you can help uh, feed the hungry as well. So we'll jump into it. Um, so the top performing card, like I mentioned, Glistening Deluge, had the highest included win rate. However, this is, they're saying main deck quantity, but a lot of times it is going to be a sideboard option uh, in this deck. So this is the one that it, it hates on a green and white creatures. Green decks aren't really prevalent and it's more of like a soldier's white weenie style deck or mono white midrange. So it's more of a card you'd bring in in the sideboard if you want to hedge against those, the wedding announcement decks, stuff like that. The top performing deck card is actually Invasion of Alara. So if we look at it, it's got an included win rate of 40 uh, 57 decks so in decks that it's played um the decks win uh, 57 percent of the time uh minimum for so if we look at the number of games 640 matches uh and then the main deck quantity is four of folks are keeping it 63 percent of the time 64 and then uh when it's available it is so the available win rate so uh of this card is available to cast during the game so when you cast it, it's got a 61% chance. So this card is winning the game. Um, so very powerful battle. Enters battlefield, exile cards from top of your library until you reveal two non-land cards of mana value four or less. You may cast one of those, though paying its mana cost, put the other of them in your hand, then put the other cards exile at the bottom of your library. When it flips, you're, you have Awaken, the Maelstrom is all colors. Target player draws two cards. You may put an artifact card from your hand onto the battlefield, create a co copy of a permanent you control, distribute counters, um, and then destroy target permanent. So it just does a whole lot. And uh, if we take a look, quick look at the decks that it's being played in, uh, well, there's not the volume of games because there's a lot of deviation here. 
Um, there, it's predominantly played in five color domain kind of Atraxa piles. Uh, I did run into one of these during my run for the metagame challenge. Uh, so the decks are playing some copies of Cemetery Desecrator in there, uh, just as a kind of removal option that you can get some value out of. Uh, it has some Graveyard Hate, um, so you get some value there as well. Uh, and then this also lets you remove counters from a target permanent. Um, where it's the mana value. So the remove counters is a notable text here because you can remove the counters from Invasion of Alara. Uh, this happens if you've been like an Atraxa, for example, or a Leyline Binding. I think this is actually only creatures. Uh, oh no, it's not. So it's any card. So you can get rid of if you have like a Leyline Binding in the graveyard. Uh, it you could get rid of six, for example, if you have. Um, herd migration, which you're naturally cycling to discard anyways, there's some value there in terms of you get your land and then the Desecrator gets to remove the counters from Alara. So some nice synergy there. You got like a Tali's in the side, and then it's just like your domain pile, so you get reduction in terms of Leyline Binding. Five color ramp deck really is where the deck is at. Um, so if we jump back, we have uh, the Archangel Elspeth. Uh, so this is the new kind of weenie style, makes tokens, puts counters on things, and then mass reanimates small stuff. Again, we have about 57% win rate, two copies. Uh, it's kept a lot at 73%, and when it's available, it's got about 59%. So it's driving the average up on the deck. Similarly, again, if we look at the Elspeth, we've seen it in some copies of the Esper Legend decks being played in a single copy. Uh, Esper Legends, and then we also see it in a couple of the Mono White Shells. Um, so these are the Mono White Midrange decks. Uh, this one is a little bit Planeswalker heavy. You have like the tokens. This version is a little bit more controlling as well with the access to Farewell uh, that you see. Then there's also um, like a Monastery Mentor version of the deck uh, that's playing it in the sideboard. You got like Invasion of Gobugan. So it's playing played in a lot of like varied numbers, whether side or main in predominantly mono white or the Esper Legends style decks. Um, the next card up is Thalia and the Gitrog monster. So a legendary Abzan creature, uh, kind of hate berry style. This one's got a 56% win rate and then similarly 59. So all these cards are really showing that they're overperforming. Being a legend um, competing in like the four drop slot, uh, it's two copies that's included there. If we look at Thalia and the Gitrog, it's seen play in Abzan Legends. Um, so kind of just your Legends pile, you're substituting the blue for access to stuff like Lissa, Malyra, and the um, Thalion Gitrog monster, as well as it's seeing play in the four color Legends list. Um, you're getting access to Slogurk, uh, Malyra, and kind of the package. I think this version's better than the Abzan, like Rafine's probably the best card in the Legends deck. You pair it up with the Slogarks as well, you kind of recycle those cards kind of mixed into there. Um, so kind of a legend shell. Speaking of legends, Rona, Herald of Invasion, probably one of the most widely played cards in the set. Uh, it's kind of a glue card. Uh, its win, win rate and performance rate is very similar. We see the number quite a, quite high at 3,800 copies, where all of these are sub 1,000, 55% and then 55%, but it's kept quite a lot. So it, it's the card that doesn't necessarily outright win you the game, but indirectly has an outcome in terms of just helping you loot and stuff like that. The Rona itself, we'll see, is being played predominantly in Esper Legends, a couple of variations of the deck itself. Um, if we just scroll down, just you see how many versions of Esper Legends there are. Uh, there's a lot of configuration that you can do. Yeah, it's just predominantly Esper Legends that we're seeing it played in at this point. Um, we also look at then Pylon is usually just kind of like a fringe sideboard card maybe. Main deck you see one to two copies. Just a, a removal spell. Nothing to write home about. Uh, we have Chandra's Hope's Beacon. Uh, so this is another card that's performing higher in terms of being cast than its actual results. So if we look at Chandra, it's actually seeing play in a lot of different decks. Um, it's a good top end planeswalker, provides card advantage, the doubling of spells is good, and can be used as two removal spells even when it comes down. Um, you were seeing it played in the Grixis Hidzuku deck. This is the version that Crokies was playing. He was having success with it, but it looks like overall the win rate is sub 50%. Uh, this is trying to jam in a whole bunch of things with like Breach the Multiverse and such. 
Uh, this is a deck I was watching it the other day. It's another kind of uh, combo. I forget his name. It's another streamer. Uh, I apologize. It is hard to keep track of... Chris Patella. There we go. Um, so the whole kind of concept of the deck is use a Tali, try to cast a Tali as many times as possible, to reanimate it with Diagraph Rebirth. Um, so it's kind of reanimator shell. Just keep recasting stuff, get value. Your kind of combo turn is just casting a whole bunch of stuff from yours and your opponent's graveyard or library or graveyard and getting a whole bunch of value. There's like the Rakdos midrange list that's looking to double cast Invoke Despairs. There's a Grixis midrange, very similar, but you get access to counter spells and Corpse Brazer. Um, so you can see how many variations. So I would say like crafting Chandra is probably safe in some numbers because we could see how many variations of decks. Like while it is red based, you could play it in a bunch of different strategies and stuff like that, which is usually where you want to be at in terms of a wild card. Um, I didn't highlight it here. We could probably pull it up. This one's probably worth speaking to as well. It's the Hidetsuku. Um, and Kari, so another card. If we look at it, it's 54%, but its actual casting is at 57. Uh, so it's performing higher than its overall result. Um, so if we look at it, again, the Grixis, it's usually in varied Hidetsuku piles. Um, we're seeing it in kind of these combo elements with Breach the Multiverse. We're seeing it in just kind of fair value decks. Uh, and then there's also like the Lithomantic or the um, Explosive Singularity combo versions. So there's a couple different variations. It's usually in Grixis piles that you see it um, kind of played with that. Um, the, the, I think it's a fairly decent just kind of mid rangey value card all things considered i the combo route exists but i think the combo route you're playing bad 10 drop cards just to get the combo to go whereas if you just play like good grixis cards with a card that draws you some cards gets you some incremental free value also can just have some effect uh the other card i wanted to look at really quick is where's our dino where is our dino where is itali where is my itali Itali. Itali. Okay, so looking at Itali, the card is very good. It's performing at 58%, but its included win rate is 52% of the decks it's playing. So I think the shell is just something that people are still trying to work out, whether it just be in those Rakdos reanimator decks with the Traxa with some copies of Itali. Uh, I think this differentiation is something important to look at because it's this indicates that a card is performing well, but the way people are building it is wrong. So there leads to some innovation that could potentially come out with this particular card. Uh, the last thing I wanted to check was in a similar vein to what we just did with the Tali, is check cards that are kind of outperforming their overall uh, win rate. So if we look at, for example, um, Hazaret and Dejuro and Hazaret. So this card is being played in a Mardu Legends list and it's actually performing like it's a card that when it gets cast it's performing really well but the decks themselves aren't performing too well this card is a little bit more limiting than itali where you kind of play it a bunch this requires you to be pretty much in a legend's shell and it requires you to be this be the kind of the top end of your deck while you can cheat into play bigger things you lose the advantage of because if you play like six and seven and eight drops you're going to have times where your hand's full, you don't get the Vigilance and Haste, and then it's easy to interact with it just being a vanilla... Like, the turn you cast it, if you don't get an attack, it's a vanilla creature. Um, so something to keep in mind there. Similarly, like Sunfall. Sunfall, again, is just a sweeper effect. Sweepers are going to be good in, like, the Mono White deck, stuff like that. Another card we see that's performing pretty well is Breach the Multiverse. Um, another card that's being... You're getting free value, you're getting to cast a bunch of stuff. I'd seen a lot of play uh, both in the main boards as well as some side boards uh, to go in to kind of steal your opponent's attractions or stuff like that, getting that, that value engine out of it. Um, so that's it for the week. Um, let me know what you think of these kinds of analysis. I, would don't, I won't do these regularly, but let me know if you like these for like set releases or some period like that. Just kind of going over performing cards, non-performing cards. Um, like similarly, we can look, if you're interested, like the worst performing cards. Um, invasion of Bergamon, like all these invasions. The shark is not doing too well. Ren's not doing too well. Kenra. So we can look at it a bunch of different ways to kind of slice and dice, but I'm really interested to see what folks think 
uh, in their opinion of this type of content. In any case, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great one. And like I said, if you can, watch a video, like, comment, subscribe. I'm trying to max out the amount of uh, donations I can do for charity. Thanks for watching.